गेज आई होप यू यू गाइज अ ड्रिंक ग्रेट सो टूडेज वीडियो इज़ फॉर क्लास टेंथ कर्नाटका स्टेट बोर्ड स्टूडेंट्स एंड आई हैव स्टार्टेड दिस सीरीज फॉर द जोग्राफी सेक्शन इन विच वन बाई वन वी विल गो थ्रू ईच एंड एवरी चैप्टर्स एक्सप्लेनेशन अलॉन्ग विद दैट इन द नेक्स्ट वीडियो यू विल गेट द क्वेश्चन आंसर्स ऑल्सो ऑफ द सेम चैप्टर my motive is to you should get the chapter properly you should understand the chapter so that from in between the chapter also if the question will come you can you can be able to give the answers so this is specially for the karnataka state board students because in their syllabus the first chapter from geography is india geographical position and physical features okay so let's start with the chapter so before starting guys i have a humble request from you from you all if you like the video if the explanation is good then do like it share it with your friends and if you're new to my channel so don't forget to subscribe the channel thank you so let's start with the chapter so let's start with the chapter guys okay so let's discuss the topics which we have to read in this chapter the first thing which we will read in this chapter is about the heritage of our country india in the second topic we will read about the origin and the background of the word bharat you know no that our country is also known as uh, bharat we call it bharat so from where did that uh, name bharat originated what is the background behind that those things we will read and in the third topic we will read about the india's geographical location means where is our country located in the world what is the extent what is the land what is the area what are bodies and what are the neighbor neighboring countries which are surrounding our country next we will read about the physical divisions of india and at last we will read about the mountains plains and coastal regions so these are the topics which we have to go through through go through in this chapter as you all know guys that india exhibits units unity in diversity from the from the ancient times only we can see the unity in the that's why we call that india is a uh, in in india we can see unity in diversity in many of the places in many of the uh, articles you have seen that india exhibits unity in diversity you, you you have seen that in india so many cultures are there so many religions are there so many different languages we speak but there is unity in our country right so if in if you if we uh, in the entire world people used to talk about india that india has a rich heritage we have a rich source of natural resources we have so many religions so many cultures and we have different uh, climatic conditions sometimes we have summers in india sometimes we have winters like that rainy season and all it's go it's going on so that is a small introduction about that now we will start with the main topic of the chapter that is our india's position in the world let's see what is the position of our country in the world so first of all india is a peninsula located in southeast asia so what do you understand by the word peninsula peninsula means if any area if any area is located by water on the three sides then that is called that we call it as peninsula means a land which is surrounded by water bodies from three sides is called a peninsula so india is a peninsula located in southeast asia means our country india is also is located means it is also surrounded by water bodies from the three sides and it is located in southeast asia in the world map if you can see then you can see the position of india in the southeast asia it is also called india and hindustan obviously we all know that india is our country india is known as india and hindustan and from where did the name india has been derived the name india has been derived from the river indus this is very important you have to remember that the india the word india has been derived from the river indus okay next it has been named bharat after the indian king bharata so from where did the word bharat we got we get it from the ancient king called bharata the country is entirely in the northern hemisphere so in which hemisphere our country lies it lies in the northern hemisphere it is wide in the north tapering to form a triangle in the south ending in the indian ocean if you look at the position of india in the world map you will see that 
uh, in the north direction it is little white then it will form a triangle type of shape in the south and it will end in which ocean it will end in the indian ocean now let's look at the map in the next page You can look the map of India, position of India in the world map. You can see the India is given over there. Right? You can see it is tapering, it is ending towards the Indian Ocean and it is uh, like, uh, it is forming a triangular type of shape in the south region. The same thing is written over there. Now, now we will look at the size of our country, India. It is the seventh largest country in the world. So what is the position of our country in the world? It is the seventh largest. Among all the countries in the world, India is the seventh largest in the world. Now, let's look at the area of India. India is 32,87,263 square kilometers in area. Imagine how big it is, right? It occupies about 2.4% of the world's total area. If we talk about the complete area of the world, then our country occupies 2.4%. Suppose I have drawn a pie chart over there. Then our country India will occupy how much percent? It will occupy 2.4% in the world. Right? There are 28 states and 6 union territories. As this book is revised in 2022, but now if we... If we see the latest one, then there are 28 state and 8 union territories. But according to your book, it's given as 28 state and 6 union territories. New Delhi, also known as the National Capital Territory. We used to write, no, Delhi NCT. So it is also known as Delhi Capital Territory. As per the 2011 census, India has a total population of 121 crore. So what do you understand by census? Census is... Uh, generally used to calculate the total population of a country and it is and it is repeated after every 10 years okay so in 2011 one census was done one population count was done oh, and at that time the total population was 121 crores it has about 17.5 percent of world's population so how much world's population it has it has 17.5 percent of world's population India's second largest country as far as population is concerned and and sorry and ranks behind China means after China the second number is India according to the population you know that how how populous uh, how um, how much rich it is in population means it's it is a populous country right next we'll read about the latitudinal position okay India extends 8 degree 4 minutes to 37 degree 6 minutes in the north latitude. So this is the latitudinal position of India. 8 degree 4 minutes to 37 degree 6 minutes in the north latitude. The total length from Kanyakumari in the south to Kashmir in the north is 3214 kilometers. You know no, that Kanyakumari is in the south position and Kashmir is in the north position in the map of India. So the total length from Kanyakumari to Jammu and Kashmir is 3214. 14 kilometers. Indira Point in the Great Nicobar Islands, located at 6 degree 45 minutes, is the southernmost point. So, where is the Indira Point located? It is located in Great Nicobar Islands. Okay, and is the southernmost point. The Tropic of Cancer, or 23 and a half 1 by 2 it will be 1 by 2 degree north latitude passes through central part of india okay the tropic of cancer you all know about tropic of cancer it passes through what it will pass through the central part of india now okay now let's talk about the longitudinal position. About latitudinal po position already we have discussed. Now we'll talk about the latitudinal position. India extends from 78 degree 7 minutes east to 97 degree 25 east longitude. These values guys you have to learn anyhow. Right? Indian standard time IST is based on 82 and a half. 82 and a half. It will be 82 and a half degree east longitude passing through Allahabad. Indian time is ahead of Greenwich time by about 5 hours and 30 minutes. If we talk about GMT, Greenwich mean time, then our Indian time is ahead of how many hours? 5 hours and 30 minutes. Now, frontiers and neighboring countries. Now, we'll look, at, look about the, what are the neighboring countries which are present. 
Okay. India being a peninsula, it has both land and water frontiers too. Since it is a peninsula, so it has land on three sides. Sorry, it has water on three sides and on one side it has land. It has 15,200 km of land frontier and 6,100 km of coastline. So, 15,200 km of land is there and 6,100 km of coastline is there. India shares land frontiers with seven nations. So, with how many nations India is sharing its land? With seven nations, seven countries. In the northwest, it shares with Afghanistan and Pakistan. In the northwest side of India, which two countries are there? Afghanistan and Pakistan. In the north with China, China is in the north position, Nepal and Bhutan. In, then in the east we have Myanmar and Bangladesh. So in the northwest we have Afghanistan and Pakistan as neighboring country. In the north we have China, Nepal and Bhutan. And in the east we have Myanmar and Bangladesh. So these are the seven neighboring countries of India. Sri Lanka in the south and Maldives in the southwest are also neighboring countries of India. Okay, Sri Lanka, it is present in the south and Maldives, it is present in the southwest. They are also the neighboring countries of India. So, all together, how many country, neighboring countries we have? Let's check once. Pakistan, Afghanistan, China, Nepal, Bhutan, Myanmar, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka and Maldives. So, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We have 9 neighboring countries, right? 7 uh, with seven countries india is sharing its land frontier and with two countries it is sharing its coastline front frontier so altogether nine countries are there. okay now let's talk about the physical features of india so let's see what is written over there india has different types of relief features yeah it is true india has different types of relief features these are found in different parts of the country their history dates back to different geological periods and there are differences in the structure and surface features based on these differences the country is divided into four major divisions so this you have to remember on the basis of physical features india is divided into how many major divisions on uh, it is divided into four major divisions. The first one we have is the northern mountains. The first one we have is northern mountains. Let's see what is written in northern mountains. The Himalayan mountain is the highest in the world and consists of highest peaks, deep valleys, glacier rivers, etc. So Himalayan mountain is the highest in the world and it consists of peaks, deep valleys, glacier rivers, etc. The Himalayan range begins at the Pamir north in the west, extends up to Arunachal Pradesh in the east. So this Himalayan mountain range, it will begin from Pamir north in the west and it will go towards Arunachal Pradesh which is present in the east direction. And what is the length of the, Him of the Himalayan mountain or the northern mountains? It is 2500 km. These folded mountain ranges are are three main ranges so how many again the northern mountains are divided into three main regions the first one is called shivalik mountains also known as foothills of himalaya second one we have the himachal also known as the middle himalaya and the third one we have the greater himalayas also known as the himadri so first we'll start with shivalik range shivalik range is also known as foothills of himalaya remember that that name because sometimes it is asked shivalik range is also known as Dash. So you can give the answer as it is foothills of Himalaya. The Shivalik range hills are the most recent formation and are located in the southern part. They have lesser height. So this we have that Shivalik ranges they are the most recent one means they are not ancient they are the they are recently formed and where they are located they are located in the southern part of the northern mountains. They have lesser height the height is also very less they are also known as the foothills of Himalayas. Now let's look at the next point for Shivalik range. These hills have narrow strips of plains or valleys which are called dunes. Okay, now the Shivalik range. They have narrow strips of plains or valleys and they are called what? They are called dunes. For example, Dehradun, Kota, Patil and Chukamba, Udhampur and Kotil. These are about 1600 to 1500 meters above the sea level. So we have the examples for Shivalik ranges as Dehradun, Kota, Patil, 
Chakkamba, Udhampur and Kotli. And what is the height? It is 600 to 1500. Next we will start with the Himachal. The Himachal is known as Middle Himalaya or the Central Himalaya. They are about 3600 meters to 4500 meters in height. They are greater in height. They are larger in height as compared to the Shivalik range, right? So their height is 6, 3600 to 4500 meters and are located between Shivalik and Greater Himalayas. So where are the Himachal or the Middle Himalayas located? They are located between the Shivalik and the Greater Himalayas. Okay, they are in the, between, in the middle. They are about 60 to 80 kilometers in width. See, height is 3600 to 4500, but their width, that is 60 to 80 kilometers. The lesser Himalayas consist of many parallel mountain ranges. Okay, the lesser Himalayas consist of many parallel mountain ranges. For example, Pir Panjal, Mahabharata, Range, Nagtiba, Masuri, etc. Kang, Kangra, Kullu are the famous valleys over there. Shimla, Masuri, Nanital, Rani Khet, Chakrata and Darjeeling are the well-known hill stations. You all have heard about the hill stations about Shimla, Masuri, Nanital, right? So these are the hill stations which are located in the Himachal, Himachal region or, him, or the Middle Himalaya. Next we have the Greater Himalayas or the Himadri. These are known as the highest peaks of the Himalayas means they are of the greatest height and earlier formed ranges of the Himalayas. So these are the ancient one. They are formed at the first when the Himalayas were formed. These ranges completely covered with snow. Hence it is called Himadri, adobe of snow. So why it is called Himadri? Why Greater Himalayas are called Himadri? Greater Himalayas are called Himadri because they are completely covered with snow and they are formed earlier. This is about 600 meters to 8000 meters above the sea level. So what is the height of the greater Himalayas? It is up from 6000 to 800 meters. The highest peak Mount Everest lies between Nepal and Tibet. So what is the highest peak the Mount Everest? It is 8848 meters and it lies between Nepal and Tibet. Other peaks of this range are Kanchanjunga, Dolagiri, Do, Do, Nanda Devi, Gauri, Gauri, Shankara, etc. These peaks have many glaciers, the famous among them being Gangotri. It is origin of river Ganga. So these peaks, the greater Himalayas have many glaciers and the most common among them is Gangotri. And it originates from the river Ganga. There are many passes which not only provide transport facilities but are also excellent tourist attractions. So there are many areas near that which not which not only provide the tour, transport facilities means through that not only the buses or the trains etc will go but they are also one of the tourist attractions. These are Kashmir's, Kashmir, Barzil, Zozila, Barala, Cha of Himachal Pradesh. The range of old mountains lying to the north of the greater Himalayas Himalayas is called Trans Himalayas. So we have some range of fold mountains which lie, lie north of the greater Himalayas and they are known as what? They are known as Trans Himalayas. This consists of Kara Koram range and Kailash range. Godwin Austin or K2 is the highest peak in the India. Okay, just remember that Gordon Austin or K2 is the highest peak in India. And what is the height? It is 8611 meters. Ladakh Plateau also lies in this region. So our the Ladakh Plateau about Ladakh you all have you have you all know so it also lies in the greater Himalayas. Now we will read about the importance of Himalayas. The first point. The Himalayan mountains have influenced the life of Indians to a greater extent. Yeah, it is it is a correct fact that Himalayan mountains they have they have an impact in the in the life of us, in the life of the people who are living in India. They provide protection to India by obstructing the cold winds from the sub Siberian regions. Right. The Himalayan mountains protect us from the cold winds from the Siberian region. 
दे आर द बर्थ प्लेस ऑफ मेनी रिवर रिवर्स हिमालयाज दीज हिमालयाज फ्रॉम हेयर मेनी रिवर्स ऑरिजिनेटेड दे फेसिलिटेट हाइड्रो इलेक्ट्रिक पावर स्टेशन बिकॉज ऑफ द प्रेजेंस ऑफ द रिवर एंड द वाटर बॉडीज हाइड्रो इलेक्ट्रिक पावर जनरेशन आर ऑल्सो ऑल्सो प्रेजेंट ओवर देयर दे आर द होम्स टू मेनी टाइप्स ऑफ प्लांट्स एंड एनिमल्स यू नो नो डेट मेनी ऑफ द प्लांट्स एंड एनिमल्स विच कैन सर्वाइव ओनली इन द कोल्ड रीजन दे आर प्रेजेंट इन द हिमालयन रीजन दे आर अ ग्रेट ट्रेजर हाउस ऑफ मिनरल्स एंड ऑल्सो सिग्निफिकेंट फॉर टूरिज्म एंड रिलीजियस सेंटर्स सो ओवर हेयर वी कैन फाइन फाइन लॉर्ड ऑफ मिनरल्स एंड दे आर ऑल्सो अ ग्रेट अट्रैक्शन फॉर टूरिस्ट राइट and like we have some temples also over there in jammu and kashmir so that those are the centers for religious centers these those are for religious centers the northern great plains this is the second type second division of india the northern great plains the northern plains of the great plains of the north are also called satluj ganga plains so remember this one the great plains of the north are also called satluj ganga plains they are found between the himalayan mountains of the north and the peninsular plateau in the south so where is the north great plains found they are found between the himalayan mountains and the peninsular plateau between north and south okay these plains stretch stretch from the plains of the river indus in the west to the brahmaputra valley in the east so from where these plains will stretch itself it will stretch from the plains of the river indus in the west to the brahmaputra valley in the east their breadth is around 2400 km whereas width is 70 km to 500 km This area has the highest variation in the height and is completely flat. Uh this area has the least variation in height. Sorry. There is there is no variation in the height means no change in height and it is completely flat. You can imagine. The entire plain is formed by the deposition of alluvial soils brought about by the rivers which arises in the Himalayas. So just now we have read about your uh, just now we are reading about the north great plains in that which type of soil is present in that alluvial soil is present remember that in that alluvial soil is present which are brought which are which rises in the himalayas by the rivers which rises in the himalayas now we will read about the peninsular plateau the third type it is the largest of all the physiographic division of india it is the most ancient and is the part of gondwana landmass which existed in the early stages of the earth so this peninsular plateau is the largest division of the of or largest physiographic division of india and this is the most ancient means it is formed earlier of all the physical division and it is part of the gondwana landmass the stretch it stretch from the south of the satluj ganga plain up to the indian ocean in the south so from where to where it it is present it is present between south of the satluj ganga plain up to the indian ocean in the south its total area is about 16 lakh square kilometer so what is the total area of peninsular plateau it is 16 lakh square kilometer it stretches from the aravalli mountains in the north to kanyakumari in the south so from where to where it is present it is present between aravalli mountains in the north to kanyakumari in the south it extends approx 1400 km from the western ghats in the west to the rajmahal hills of jharkhand in the east so from where to where it is present it extends from 1400 km 1400 km from the western ghats in the west to the rajmahal hills of jharkhand in the east it is triangular shape been broad in the north and narrow towards the south it is bounded by the arabian sea in the west bay of bengal in the east and the indian ocean in the south the peninsular the peninsular plateau has great economic significance the reason for this is this it has rich deposits of minerals many waterfalls provide hydroelectricity so why peninsular plateau is important because it has a rich deposit of minerals many of the minerals are present in that region and it has many hydro waterfalls which also provide hydroelectricity hydroelectricity means electricity electricity which is generated by water now we have coastal plains the fourth one the last one 
apart from the islands india has a coastal line of 6100 kilometers okay uh, means uh, islands are present over there but coastal plains are also present no that is present uh, nearly 6100 kilometers starting from the kutch region of gujarat the coastline extends up to the gangetic river basin in the east from the kutch region of gujarat it will go to the gangetic river basin in the east the narrow plains along the coast is called the coastal plains the narrow plain along the coast is called the coastal plains the indian coastline is divided into west coast and east coast just remember this that the indian coastline is divided into west coast and east coast the west coast spreads from the kutch of gujarat in the north between the arabian sea and the western ghats up to the cape of kanyakumari in the south it is 1500 kilometers long now this west coast coast spread from kutch of gujarat in the north you know gujarat is present in the north between arabian sea in the western ghats up to the cape of kanyakumari in the south it is 1500 kilometers long the eastern coastal plain extends from kanyakumari in the south to the gangetic river in the north so from kanyakumari to the gangetic river the eastern coastal plains are present Now at last we have the islands. There are totally two forty-seven islands. How many islands are present? Two forty-seven islands belonging to India. So just remember that there are two forty-seven in islands present in India. Two hundred four are in the Bay of Bengal. Two hundred four islands are present in Bay of Bengal, and forty-three are present in the Arabian Sea. In the Gulf of Manar, there are few coral islands also. So in the Gulf of Manar. Which type of islands are present? Coral islands are present. Andaman and Nicobar Islands in the Bay of Bengal are formed from hard volcanic rocks. So Andaman and Nicobar Islands in the Bay of Bengal are formed from where? From hard volcanic rocks. Lakshadweep Islands are coral i are coral islands. Lakshadweep Islands are which type of islands? They are coral islands. India's extreme southern tip is located in the great nicobar islands this is called in indira point india's extreme southern tip is located in the great nicobar islands okay so india's extreme southern tip is located in which island it is located in the great nicobar island and it is also called indira point so with this guys we have finished the chapter but something is given over there for just an extra knowledge the boundary the boundary line between india and pakistan is known as what it is known as red cliff line okay there is one india and pakistan is divided uh, one border means india and pakistan in between india and pakistan we have a border line which is known as red cliff line the boundary line between india and china is known as mac mohan line okay and between india and china there is again a border which is known as mac mohan line and between india and Ag afghanistan again there is a border line which is known as durand line so just remember these things now babar bhangar and khadar when himalayan rivers enter the plains they that de they deposit of rock there they are called babar the area with loamy soil deposited of the ancient time is called bhangar the loamy soil formed in the recent times is called khadar so we have three types of soil babar bhangar and khadar so when the himalayan rivers they will enter the plain they deposit rock there and they are called what babar when the when there will be loamy soil deposit over there that is called bhangar and when the loamy soil formed in recent time that is called the khadar so with this we have finished the chapter i hope you all have understood the lesson properly if you have any doubts any questions then do comment in the comment box definitely i will try to clear your doubts and apart from that we will also discuss the question answer from this chapter and after that we will start the next lesson thank you for watching guys if you like it then please like it share it and subscribe my channel for the upcoming videos for karnataka state board thank you for watching